Hey guys, it's Dr. George here, and this is my first video blog of the day, um, day one of the Sexual Health HIV conference. So, the start of the day was actually really great. We had a fantastic um, opening address by Khadija Bla, um, who is a wonderful sexual health educator from Sierra Leone, and she has created a wonderful space where she's actually able to educate people um, from a, her African background in ways that we are learning that the traditional way that we do um, sexual health education here in Australia is very much enwrapped in white privilege and it's important that we understand that people from culturally diverse backgrounds that are actually presenting in different ways and don't have the same education as us. So it was a really good reminder for me that we have to be aware that just because I have had education about sexual health it doesn't mean that everybody else has as well and we need to take things right back to basics and question our own privilege but also is this something that somebody else is able to pick up? So I think this is a very important thing for all educators, all doctors, all nurses, is that we are aware of where we are coming from when it comes to educating other people. Um, Professor Basil Don Donovan was also awarded the Distinguished Service Award for his amazing breadth of work that he has done within sexual health in Australia, um, starting from a, his early papers where he was looking at the prevalence of gonorrhea within sex workers, this is almost 30 years ago, um, through to his current work with, with his advice that we work with as many different amazing people as possible. The more people we work with, the higher the diversity that we are able to get. And you know, you're really bringing in as much um, fantastic information as you can with other people. Um, we then moved on into the world of HPV, um, and this was really very interesting. I found that the HPV discussion was highly relevant, and there's new data there that surprised me and also surprised some of the participants as well. As we know, that you know, HPV is associated with cervical changes, but it's also associated with head and neck cancers, particularly tonsillar um, cancers, as well as anal cancers. We were aware that, yes, men who have have sex with men are at a higher risk of these cancers, um, head and neck cancers and anal cancers. Um, and for people who are living with HIV, that is also an increased risk. Um, and we're also people who are men who have sex with men who are HIV positive. It's almost a 100 fold risk for head and neck cancers and anal cancers as well. So it does bring into my own practice, do we need to be aware of, um, should we be doing DREs or digital rectal exams on each of our positive patients every year to check for anal cancers? And certainly we should at least be asking, are you having any problems opening your bowels? What I did find interesting was that it appears that the research is showing that it's actually people who are, um, it's actually heterosexual men are at a higher risk of head and neck cancers rather than homosexual men. So it does appear that there is a combination of two things, that, that cervical secretions associated with oral sex are associated, like the, the higher the dosage that, that heterosexual men are getting is associated with an increased risk of HPV in the th related cancers in the throat. Um, and also that men are not able to mount the sort of immune response that women are able to mount as well. So this is another interesting finding that heterosexual men are at a higher risk of throat cancers associated with HPV. Um, so these were two interesting findings that I found as well. Closing up the, um, the morning session was that we were talking about the change in uh, HPV screening within Australia um, and also the HPV vaccination programs as well that we are looking at the perhaps moving to a, a two injection regimen for HPV the 
HPV vaccination as well as a vaccine that has nine strains of HPV as opposed to the four strains. Um, and it looks like New Zealand is going to be rolling this out next year and hopefully in Australia we'll be moving in that direction as well. There are some other changes in regards to the, um, the cervical screening as well and I will pop a link under this video that gives that in much better detail. It's very, very dense information, so it's a little bit harder to talk about. So, um, so yes, that was a really great start to the morning, and I hope this is received well. Have a great day. More news to come.